favorite guests. He's uh, he's become that. He's retired from the U.S. Army as Lieutenant Colonel Danny Davis, senior fellow now, military expert at Defense Priorities. He writes about defense issues, and uh, he's got uh, a new column out, and Defense Priorities has taken a uh, stance on this, too, that uh, President Trump Uh, who is considering sending an additional 14,000 troops to the Middle East to, quote, counter Iran, would be making a big mistake. Danny's on the other end of our line. How are you, my friend? I'm doing really well, Frank. Thanks for having me. Well, it's great to have you back once again. So why why don't we need more troops? Uh, If we send 14,000 more over, can't they wipe out all the opposition in Iran? Well, you know, I I mean, you you, got to look at this in context, which makes it even more problematic Right now, uh, well, actually, since since May of this year, we've already increased by uh, 17,000 the number of U.S. troops in the Middle East, and that brings the total to between 60 and 80,000 at any one time, depending on how many ships are, are in the in the region there. And that's already an enormous number. And to add an additional 14,000 on top of that, when it's very unclear what they're actually supposed to accomplish. Uh, it just doesn't seem that that's really in America's interest because there's no imminent threat that, oh, my gosh, if we don't send those troops over, we're going to get attacked. I mean there's nothing to uh, indicate that. In fact, the, almost the contrary, the presence of those troops and the continuing escalation is making Iran feel more and more desperate and, and uh, in trouble, and that's going to squeeze somebody to potentially – lash out in ways they otherwise wouldn't if they feel desperate and pushed into a corner. And we don't want to spawn the very thing we're trying to avoid. Yeah, like like having uh, them try to uh, fire one of those nuclear missiles that uh, that they have not been building all these years. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we're not we're not. It's not sure what we, what they do have or what they have that they might not we might not know about. The things that we do know about are, are certainly plenty of them. They do have some capability, and their anti-ship cruise missiles have been, in fact, advancing. Now, honestly, I don't want to put them in a position where they feel like they need to fire those and to use them against us because they could harm us just so that we can potentially take them out. I, I fear that there may be some who are advising the president that – I mean I'm just going to be honest. I think some people actually want to have a conflict with Iran to, quote, take care of this issue once and for all. But that would be catastrophic for us, and I really hope the president pushes back on that. Well, I, yeah, I'm right with you on that uh, all the way. Uh, anytime you want to send Americans into harm's way, you better have a doggone good reason. And uh, I'm not sure anybody could make the case for why we'd want to send these troops over there, uh, no matter uh, what Iran may be up to in the in the Straits of Hormuz or anyplace else, you know. Uh, Fourteen thousand troops—that that's a, a recipe for a lot of uh, a lot of sadness back home at some point. Well, and, I mean, it, boy, I couldn't agree with you more there, especially as one who's been deployed four times in that region uh, and have seen people that I know have been killed in action. And, you know, it's sometimes it's really hard to say, wait, what did they die for? How did they help America? And we don't want to add to that list. And that's actually one of the things that uh, has kind of been concerning to me, at least in the reports that have been made public so far is that they've been talking about this number and this just category of they're going there to counter Iran, but no explanation at all for what they're supposed to be there to do. What, what's their function? What's their purpose? And you know, you sit in military somewhere, you have to have an attainable mission, a, a clear and concise military objective that could be attained, and some kind of criteria by which you would say, here's when the mission would end. And I don't see any of those even being discussed, much less articulated. No, I mean, not even a mention is made of the, the Houthi rebels, uh, you know, and and uh, the rest of the, the problems in the Middle East uh, and all the folks that Iran's been supporting uh, from, from ISIS all the way back to al-Qaeda. In those days, Iran's been supporting those. But nothing's being said about that. And we're talking about, uh, you know, stopping Iran, countering Iran. But uh, like you said, we we don't know what counter Iran means. I mean, you can't, you can't go in and, and win over uh, their their politicians because they're self appointed. They're they're it's based on religion over there, and so uh, you're you're kind of just barking up an empty tree. Well, what what I would like to see, which which could really remedy a lot of these issues here, is I'd like to see Congress step up and take care of its res- uh, constitutional responsibilities. And if we're going to send that many more troops into a potential conflict zone, you know that, that gets into the area where it's close to the War Power uh, Act, which requires Congress to authorize that. And so they should be asking questions right now before anything happens to say, 
you know, or tell us, tell us as representatives of the American people, why do you want these troops? What do you think they can do? If the administration has some, you know, reason that we don't know about that actually makes this a good idea, okay, very then good enough. Then then we'll support that. But I think that the administration owes the Congress and the American people an explanation of what they want these troops to do if we're going to risk going to war. I'm, uh, uh, amen. I'm with you on that 100 percent. And and the other part, as I read at Defense Priorities, is we already have 50,000 U.S. forces in that region in Syria, Afghanistan, and Iraq. And now we're going to send 14,000 more? I mean, that's that's quite a, uh, a boost in the number of Americans over there. It's a 28 percent increase. Right. Yeah, that's that's uh, there's not a lot of people that realize there's that many troops over there. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why our, our organization really highlighted that to point out that, hey, look, there's more already than you understand what's going on here. And, and one of the critical things anytime you talk about the use of military force is there has to be some sort of compelling threat to American security. It can't be some threat to Syrian democratic forces security in Syria. It can't be, well, we have to bolster the Iraqi government, which is what many of our troops in Iraq are doing right now. It can't be those things. If, if there's no threat to American security, those countries have to take care of their own security. We can't do it for them. Bingo. Danny Davis, thanks so much for being with us. Always great conversation and, and enlightening for our audience, and we sure appreciate it. Thank you so much. Always my pleasure, Frank. All right, man. Lieutenant Colonel Danny Davis, who is the military expert senior fellow at Defense Priorities.